What I'm trying to do is just make the skin as clean as possible, chase away all those nasty bugs that may be on there. Right, here we have Zoe, who about a year ago had a couple of body piercings put in, and these are sitting, just to put it into context, here is her spine down here with her shoulder blades here and here, and there's a little foot plate underneath the skin, and then a hole through the skin to which the outside part is attached to the plate that's under the skin. So the first thing we're going to do, numb the skin. So you're going to feel a little bit of a scratch as this goes under your skin. Zoe, here we go, a little scratch coming up now, well done. You probably feel a little bit of a stingy feeling. You all right? That's good. So I'm just infiltrating the area underneath the skin, just to try and make this as numb as possible. Another little scratch just on the one above it, here we go. And I tend to put a little bit of low anaesthetic intradermally first. It gives you a really nice rapid onset of anaesthesia. And then plenty underneath it as well. And the adrenaline has the effect of also vasoconstricting so you can see the skin goes sort of whiter in appearance. Okay. So that should be the most uncomfortable bit. The advantage of using the lidocaine with adrenaline in it is that we don't get too much bleeding so we can see the, the field. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm just gently trying to separate. Does the thing lie that way or that way? Unfortunately, yeah, it's yeah. very difficult to tell. Yeah. And the trick is, it's very easy to go in and make a nice big cut and just take the whole thing out quickly. But unfortunately, if you do that, you're actually going to leave it with more scarring. Yeah, yeah. But I can feel the base plate underneath the skin. What I'm trying to right, do. There so. we are. It's yeah. just coming. Well done, darling. Doing it the there well. we it's nearly out, nearly out. out. That was nearly out. There we hey. are. That's one come out. Oh, some so that's what it looks like. Okay. So that's the. Do you want to keep That's them? what it looks like. Mm. Okay. So what we've done is, in fact, we just made it a little bit like a keyhole incision there. There was a hole where the lesion, it's where where the uh, the piercing itself was, and we've just literally made a tiny little cut, just to allow us to sort of flip it out. So I don't think there's going to be much point in trying to stitch, stitch that because all of that is going to be epithelialized inside the cavity. So it may be that we just put some sticky strips on there just to hold but that together. Yeah, yeah. I, don't get I don't really want to close a cavity which may actually yeah. form a route for infection because that cavity, strictly speaking, is not sterile. Okay, so that's the first one. Okay. So having seen what the first one looks like and how big the base is, I'm now lifting this one up here and I can actually see that just here is where the main part of the base plate is. So the shorter part of the base plate is that side. So what we now know is what we're dealing with underneath the skin. Right, so. mm -hmm. So literally I'm just making a little incision under there and then once again I'm going to hopefully flick that out again. There we are. That came out even easier. That came out much more easily. And again if we just return to the scene of the crime you can see there's a hole in the skin I've just made a little bit of a nick just to allow me to flick out the tail of the the piercing. If we put some um, steri strips on just to hold them gently closed but allow them to drain and we'll put some oxide on the top just to keep it nice and clean and dry. But there we are, both piercings out. How painful was that? Zero. Scale of one to ten? One. Well, that's what we like to hear. Fantastic. Okie doke. Let's have a look. I just want to find sort of yeah, stretch them like that and then you just put it. That's it. Yeah, that's one. That's nice. And then the same we did on. Great. Perfect. That's just, as you can see, it's just taking the tension off the skin there by gathering the skin folds up. Good. And those steri strips will sort of loosen over the next five days. I mean, ideally, if they could stay on for a week to ten days, that would be even better because um, the skin on the back is much thicker than the skin in other areas and therefore it takes longer to heal. Now what we've done is we've put a waterproof dressing on there, so that's relatively water resistant. It's not going to 
put up with a loofah or a back scrub or anything. But, <laughs> but if, if you just gently pat dry where the dressing is, it should okay. stay in place. I'll give you a spare one in case it does come off right. and then you can replace it. Yeah. Fairly easy, you have to take one bit off before you take another bit off, okay? okay. People sizes. But um, try not to change it unless you have to. Okay. The more you mess with it, the more chances you've got of it scarring. <laughs> okay. Right.